Hello and welcome back to A Better World. This is your host Mitchell J. Rabin and we're very glad that you're joining us again today. Today we're going to have another very interesting show. We have an old friend of mine on, Chris Bull, who I've known for a long, long time, who is a writer, playwright, screenwriter, and uh, just a very interesting man in his own right, is now doing some work with a group called The New Warrior. And it's involving primarily men's work bringing men together under one roof and having dialogues, conversations among them, what it means to be a man, to be male in this society, what are their strengths, its weaknesses, the difficulties, the conventions that we all have to deal with. And it's a way of kind of renewing a sense, if you will, of manhood. And we'll be talking about that and all as much as we can that involves that during the show. Welcome. Thank you. Great to have you. It's good to be here. Good to see you after all these I know, years. I know. You know. It's been a long time. Really wonderful. So, Chris, if you would just please give the audience uh, some idea, what is the new warrior? What What is the new warrior? Um, well, the the actual organization that runs the new warrior training adventure is called the Mankind Project. It's mm -hmm. Sort of the umbrella organization, um, and it did come out of a, a weekend uh, training that we call the New Warrior Training Adventure. Um, so I guess in a in one sense the new warrior would be the man who goes through the new warrior training adventure. It's like a certain rite of passage, I guess. Yeah, um, uh, I guess. I was. It's funny. As on my way over here, I was really trying to think. Well, you know, what 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 does that mean, the new warrior? And here I can tell you what I think it means. Good. Um, and what my experience is. Uh, we work a lot. Uh, with uh, examining kind of archetypal energies and uh, and things that we say are kind of essential to a man or a woman or whomever, but in our case, of course, we're dealing with men. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Essential warriors, human energies. Yeah, it, yeah. And as it lays out, uh, gender linked. Right. Um, but every society has had warriors, you know, and long ago whether you were here in America, whether you're in Scotland or in the Amazon or wherever, mm -hmm. uh, part of being a man in a society was to be a warrior. There came a time when the fires got lit or somebody blew the horn or beat Trump the drum. Played. Exactly. And you got your sword or your bow and arrow or your blow gun or whatever and you got up and you went out and you, you fought whoever needed to be fought at the time. Right? A rampaging warlord or you know, the hordes or the tribe across the river whose horses you needed. So now you go to Wall Street. Well, yeah, exactly. Well, it's the thing. I mean, in other words, there was a, a purpose, you know, in, in, in having that type of energy. There was a reason for it. And in this society, we fought, uh, what what I think part of the reason that this training was developed um, in the '80s was that there's really that kind of uh, impulse is that kind of uh, action isn't really necessary anymore. Um, we're not fighting in that kind of way and it, it, it's sort of outdated uh -huh. you know I mean we've developed all these weapons of mass destruction and you know fighting is better even, not fight that way yeah anymore. it's not you know you don't you're yeah. not going out there with your breastplate and your sword in a, in a fair fight it's who's got the better smart weapons it's just you know and all That's we're right. doing is killing masses of people and destroying masses of a wasteland and atmosphere and burning oil fields and you know it's it's insane it's mass insanity nonetheless the energy that essential energy in man is still there. And it, there it was a perception that for a lot of reasons, starting with the industrial age and fathers leaving the house and sons being raised by their mothers and, 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 some, and leading in in this country to some of the negative backlashes of the women's movement, you know, which was started for very positive reasons, but some of the backlashes were that some you know, male energy was beginning to look at as violent and bad, you know, especially after Vietnam and, you know, it was like that aggressiveness or whatever you, label you want to put on it mm -hmm. was equated with something bad and something that needed to be in check and we needed to become more sensitive and more in touch with our feminine side. And so as a result of a lot of this, you've got boys growing up often without fathers in a lot of communities, you know. Um, or with absentee fathers, mm -hmm. and, w and as they grow into this kind of energy, there's no one there to mentor them in any particular way. I mean, it's it, with all this, you know, single mothers do an amazing job, you know, but they can't teach boys how to be men, 
because some of that is, is osmosis. Some of that is, is you just look, you know. It's never going to happen. Um, you absorb. Yeah, and, and, and add that to a lot of other, I mean, we could go on for hours and hours and hours about oh, all sure. sorts of cultural things and social problems. And, but, you know, you have the rise of, of, of gangs and boys being initiated by older boys and violence. And, and on the other spectrum, you've got men growing up who, you know, men still are more or less in charge. And, and nonetheless, are they doing a very good job? You know, they're taking a lot of their energies, at least this is how we perceive it, and often um, manifesting them in negative ways, you know, running huge industries that pollute the atmosphere, um, lording it over women in, in violent and destructive ways. Mm -hmm. uh, but we don't And other men. Or other men. Especially you know. minorities and others. Absolutely. Uh, gangs and pregnancies and, I mean, you know, it's not, it's everywhere. Mm -hmm. It doesn't take, it's not too hard to see it. No. And, um, You'd be blind not to. Right. And it. So are you saying that the new warrior uh, idea is to access some of that warrior energy, if you will, and channel it into the present day, but into more positive venues? I would say that that's absolutely one of the goals of what we do. The new warrior training adventure is, 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 is patterned after ancient initiation rituals. In other words, what we have, I say we, I didn't have anything to do with it, but what the men who <laughs> created the weekend mm -hmm. were trying to accomplish, among other things, was to recreate a kind of an initiation. You know, in, in, in uh, I'm sure you're familiar with this, but in a lot of tribal societies, when a boy reached a certain age, usually around puberty, when they started getting interest in, in the girls, uh, there would come a moment where the, the tribesmen would show up in their war paint or whatever and pull the kid away from his mother screaming and kicking and say it's time for this boy to die and subsequently take them through a ritual that usually involves some sort of hardship, um, some type of lessons, often hallucinogenic drugs, you know, different societies did different things, but it was a descent of some kind. And after the descent, they were they were brought back to the community as or sometimes a vision quest. A vision quest. It was a passage of time Absolutely. during which he was being initiated by the elders, right? By the elders or the warriors or the tribe, you know, whomever. Yeah. But it was it, it was it was and by na and by nature. Yes. If it was you know a ris uh, ritual of fasting in the woods right. alone, as you say, a vision quest to see right. Um, the, the end result being, I think the, the, the assumption was that that kind of energy, specifically that kind of energy in a young male, in a young man, is dangerous. Mm -hmm. If not channeled in some way, if mm -hmm. not matured in some way, it can mm -hmm. be dangerous. And I think that we see evidence of that a oh, lot. Yeah. You know, um, uh, mm -hmm. the, some of the life expectancy statistics these days for young men, especially some in, in some minority groups, is, right. is horrendous. Right. You know, and they're killing each other. They're out there killing each other. You know. And so the feeling was that to, to bring some of this back into the, into sort of into the modern age. And my own interpretation of that is that as a man growing up, as, as a boy growing up, you know, uh, it's, one can, a man can receive uh, different wounds in their lives. And societally, there's nothing in place anymore to help the a maturation process, to grow through that, to grow out of it, to understand it, whatever. So you have a lot of men, and I include myself in this, running around, grown men, living out of a little boy emotional state, and, and therefore manifesting in kind of strange ways that don't, are not helping them and not making them happy, and probably not helping them to feel like they live a life of, of mission or of, of uh, expansion, Sure. you know. Um, or a, perhaps a higher definition of self that goes beyond um, a more infantile or at least adolescent yeah, perspective. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, one thing that, that we try to foster and, and, and work on uh, and, and the hope of a man who enters the weekend is that he has an opportunity to, probably for the first time in his life, in, in many cases, we create an arena where a man can really look into himself see what stops him, see what gets in his way, see what the wounds may be that are running his life, see why he thinks he can't do X, Y, or Z, 
and help him to reestablish for himself a, a, a whole different kind of life, a life of, of purpose, even a life of mission. I mean, you know, if you want to go that yeah. far. Um, I'm a missionary. Yeah, well, that's, I mean, <laughs> self admitted. This is what you're doing. I mean, you're actually yeah. manifesting your belief. Oh, yeah. Uh, you're actualizing your belief. Yeah. And, um, sure. Now, how, Chris, is this? I, I hear the language and it's interesting and it's purposeful and it's on target. On the other hand, it also has a, at this point in 1998, like a slight touch of almost rhetoric oh, from, hmm? well, there are so many groups that have existed right. to date right. that use the same language, that language things very, very similarly. Yeah, okay. There are that are uh, men's groups like the Sterling Institute. You know, right. we've discussed, and you mentioned another one, Common Ground. Which Common Ground. Do yeah. not know about. But, yeah. Uh, there are other kind of psychologically oriented uh, organizations that are bringing people to a. Proposing to bring people to a new place inside themselves, right. which is not so mental, right. which is maybe more heart oriented, more right. body oriented, more energy oriented, right. to kind of refocus, work with the unconscious, shift their idea of what's a limitation or a convention or a necessity, right. open up values, get them in their heart, right. and explode. <laughs> Sign me up. Okay. So, what I want to know is basically, uh, there's obviously a lot of good energy behind the new warrior. It's not that. It's I would like to know: is there a particular distinction or uniqueness, a new stamp of what it is you're doing that differentiates it from kind of at this point almost a historical body of kind of therapeutically oriented um, organizations that have been catering to a similar kind of uh, mission. Well. Is that too hard a question? No, it's not. <laughs> okay. It's just that I'm not, you know, I'm not, I don't think I'm as well versed as you are in some of these other organizations or, or, the, or the historical uh. context. So I, I, I don't really, uh, I'm not sure I, I could give well, you Let's say this. You told me, I mean, of course, you were 15. <laughs> you were right. started young, but uh, you did ask, for instance. Yeah, no, I've, been, I've done a lot of this stuff. You've done a fair amount of this I stuff. I grew up in it. You grew up, right, as, as of course, you know. as I do. Yeah. Uh, what then, how would you, uh, you're in a sense uniquely qualified to comment on what is it about this that grabbed you and got you to want to let more people know about it in your life? Well... Was it the first time you really felt like you connected to an energy or to a dynamic or a, an idea that really got you off your feet? And I would say that, um, I, I'll, of course, speak from my own experience. Um, Please. When I went through the weekend, and I know how that sounds, you know, as you speak, I, I remember sitting in all those S things and, you know, how all of it sounds. The weekend, the training, the forum, the this, <laughs> the that, you know, and there are plenty of them. It's not true. Yes, and it's actually and another a lot one of them. them. And we like and a lot of them have incredible merit. Well, I mean, sure, it's absolutely. It's life-changing for a lot of people. I mean, I think that, so. I think um, one of the things is we don't, we don't tend to talk a lot about what happens on the weekend specifically. Because we call it a training adventure, and it should be that. Yeah. Um, uh, so without entree getting, to the unknown. Yeah. Well, <laughs> sure. <laughs> but without without getting into that kind of detail. Yes. Um, I did experience a sense of myself as a man, and my relationship to other men. In a in a in a context that was entirely appropriate. And I'd never felt it before, and I'd been looking for it my entire life. Oh yeah, I mean that much I can say. I, I, it, it was just unlike anything I'd ever experienced as a feeling, as a perception, and it, it was so true for me. And, and it was uh, part of what happens on the weekend. The weekends are are run by a lot of men. We will take in up to, depending on the, 25 to 30 men. We will have up to 50 men on staff for a weekend. Hmm. That's one thing that I think probably sets us apart. Wow. <laughs> uh, okay. This is an entirely volunteer. The, ra the ratio is inverse. Yes, it's at least one on one, if not more. Mm -hmm. It's an entirely volunteer staff. Mm -hmm. The whole organization is not for profit. Nobody's actually making a living doing this. 
um, when the when the, the three men who invented this and created it actually gave it away. They didn't keep you know their copyright and everything. Mm. Like they gave it away, and different centers around the world um, mm. run their own training. So it's that large. Absolutely, mm. it's in it's in it's Fabulous. in countries in London. Uh, I think uh, South Africa started one. Um, mm -hmm. we, we have uh, at least at last count over ten thousand men mm. had gone through the weekend. Which was a very powerful thing because apparently it's been socially proven that when 10,000 individuals ex have a similar kind of experience, they can impact social change, which is uh, you know, the ultimate goal, I think, of the men that created the it. The 10,000th monkey idea. Yeah, is that what it is? <laughs> 100th monkey, it's usually called. I was kidding. <laughs> but it's interesting because Lao Tzu and uh, the ancient Chinese poem, the Tao Te Ching, refers to the 10,000 things. Mm -hmm. And that's considered like to be an infinite number, right. but uh, it's just like their equivalent at the time. But it means that once it reaches that level... It's a critical mass and it's something exactly. that could actually happen. Exactly. And, and So there's some ancient wisdom behind that number. Well, good. It's a yes. good thing. <laughs> it is a good thing. But anyway, so my point is that we, I think that, that because of um, the fact that there are that many men on this weekend, we create what, what I would call uh, a container um, it's again, I, that may be one of those words, you know, but, but um, my experience was that, that I felt absolute safety yeah. in going to a place in myself that I had never gone to. And I, as you know, I, I've been to a lot of these things, you know, and I have, there yeah. was something, there's something that men can do for men. And, and maybe this could be one of the main things. There's something that men can do for men that is completely unique, you know, uh, for, from an emotional standpoint. Um, from a, a work standpoint, you know, work that I need to do on myself. Um, and that, from a reflection standpoint, if I may say. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a challenge, you know. I mean, it's really about the challenge. And, uh, and we challenge men to step through their fear in a way that I have never met a man that has gone through the weekend that has experienced that before. That has said, oh, I know, but I've done this. You know, this is nothing new to me. Mm. And I have met men that have been... Uh -huh. you know involved in a great many things one thing you know you get obviously different categories but there are men that you know this is a point on their search and there are men that never thought about doing anything like this that show up to the weekend and, um, and it's not just about the weekend I mean I want to I think that the idea that you can go to a weekend and you'll have such a transformative experience that your life will never be the same is crap, frankly. I don't think it's true. I think that you can have a transformative experience. I'm glad I didn't ask that question. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't. Th I, I think that that's that's a, a fantasy, frankly. And let me let me you know um, complete the thought. Complete the thought by saying that something can happen that can affect change. But then, if I don't do anything about it my habits and my whatever has run me before is not going to disappear. Those things which uh, are in my shadow, like you know, the Jung, Jung talked about the shadow, right? My, those things in my subconscious that I try to hide, repress, and deny okay. are not going to go away because I went to some cool weekend. Right. It ain't, you know, at least that's my judgment. No, but what can happen, and you're also citing this, Chris, is that a door opens. It can even be flung open wide so that a person has an experience of himself that uh, can forever change the course of the rest of his life. If that I keep can working. Happen. I mean, if I think you that's stay attentive to what that experience was and get further reinforcement because right. we're, in a sense, so asleep, let's say, so conditioned yeah. that unless we have some anchors in our daily lives to shift the patterns, yeah. they'll pretty much go back to where they were. I, and I'd also say that I think one of the things that, that, that you know, we do uh -huh. um, or, or that, that at least has been unique for me, you know, in my the experiences that I have had with, you know, therapy, with EST, with various esoteric teachings, with, you know, different stuff that I've been involved in, and in some cases quite deeply involved in, was that this is the first time that I went through a process that was not only about me and, and who I am, even though that's a, a great celebration, mm -hmm. but what is my mission? What am I going to do? Right? What, what, how am I going to manifest who I am in my life to help the, the world, to help 
others to, to that's a big piece of what we work on you know Hallelujah. yeah and I think that I think a lot of this kind of stuff can tend to be a little very self-absorbing you know my this my that my whatever yeah. my problems my neuroses my childhood oh my god and and that's great you know you got to go through that stuff in my judgment to get to a point where I can begin to try and help someone else or affect change if I'm totally run by my wounded stuff all the time it's hard to be conscious because I'm not running out of my consciousness sure um, so that's a piece that, that I think it, for me is very valuable about this experience we, we, we hold nice a weekend to hear. and and we do we continue the work when when a man goes through the weekend he is um, invited to participate in what we call an integration group where with a group of the men that he goes through it's an eight week uh, now a 12 week protocol uh, called I groups and it actually again follows the pattern I of initiation in integration I? as an in oh, integration okay. I mean it could be I but it's integration okay. um, you know now you've gone through this experience how is how are you now going to integrate mm -hmm. this experience into your life into society into a sense of a sense of make mission. it meaningful make it make it meaningful and make it valuable not just for you right but for those around you for your family for your children you know how are you going to raise your children differently how are you going to deal with your significant other differently how are you going to be in the workplace you know what's what's going to change and, and that kind of change needs to be supported. And society in general, I don't think, supports it. Society supports making money. Really, that's what society supports. And buying great stuff. You know? Society, Consumerism. And that's about it. You know, we don't really support marriage. We don't support... The arts. Know, we don't support the arts, God knows. Uh, except in Hollywood, which you could hardly call Which is really arts. money. Yeah, which is money. Um, love is not supported, really. Spiritual life is not supported. No. So where are you going to go to get that support? And, you know, this is, for me, this is a place where I can go and get the support of these men. Um, Beautiful. Yeah. To, I want to, to add to a little forward. something to this because yeah. I, I appreciate a lot of what you're saying. I mean, actually, all of it. Uh, but I, I just want to kind of buttress it a little bit, if yeah. I could, um, kind of from an historical and even anthropological point of view, which strikes me whenever I reflect on uh, the men's work that I've done uh, over the years, and also, having been in contexts such as, uh, as esoteric seeming, as a yeshiva in Jerusalem, mm -hmm. which was all men mm -hmm. studying a particular perspective mm -hmm. on the nature of life. Mm -hmm. And uh, through the experiences I've had, there is a sense of brotherhood that was not ordinarily available in my yes. daily life growing up with my father, who I adore. Yes. There yes. was no brotherhood. Yes. I didn't have a physical brother in my family. So I was looking for brothers wherever I went. I was looking for fathers and brothers. And I found them in my teachers. I found one in my uncle. I found, you yeah. know, and yeah. uh, so I was semi-satisfied. But there was, as you're saying, Chris, there's no social reinforcement of the values of brotherhood and friendship even. There's not a whole lot. Yeah. You have to create it. Yeah. And if you look historically, there have always been, first of all, most people historically lived within the context of some kind of religion, some kind of religious context. That's what has populated uh, the planet primarily until right. pretty much in the last several hundred years. And so within that context, whether we like it or not, that's not the point. The point is rather there were always rituals, ceremonies, times when men would go here and women would go there. Yes. And it was known, instinctive, yes. respected, yes. written, yes. oral, and everybody knew. And right. what would happen is if you really want to kind of step back and look at it phenomenologically is that there was a chance for men to recharge as men. That's right. That polarity could get its juice, right. which is only gettable from each other. Right. You and can plug in, you can plug in, yep. and you plug in. Yep. Yeah, I'm and glad you brought that up. Yeah. I'm glad you brought that up. And when men and women come together, by the way, there is something called the, wom the woman within. Woman within. Which is sort of, a, in a sense, some kind of female counterpart to this, and we weren't able to get a representative for today's show on that, but another time we, we will. Uh, when men and women are together, it's another energy, and a fabulous energy at that, yes. but just very different yes so this is a chance to kind of I think you know just my interpretation of some of the value of 
something like the New Warrior, is for men to reconnect to that very ancient, really archetypal uh, perspective of men gathering in one place right. and women gathering in another right. so we can recharge, connect, and enjoy the vitality of our own polarity. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's absolutely... Um, it's, Does that uh, coincide with, you know, your understanding and your experience of... Uh, exactly. I mean, it really. I, I. I don't think I would have said it as well, but it. Well. Uh, <laughs> but it does. I was it, just reading you. <laughs> it does. No. It. 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 Uh, it coincides very. Very well. I mean, there is a certain energy that that goes on, and one of the things, um, for me, ha has been that, I've. Uh, I've really. This has been a, a maturation process for me. Mm -hmm. Like I've met men yeah. of all walks of life, you know, who have fed me taught me, um, encouraged me, supported me, and I in turn have been able to do that for other men. And it's been a real electric kind mm. of thing. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's that energy, as you say, is unique. And, and I think that there's, a, there's a, an automatic pull towards it. And we have football yes. teams and you know, um, the, right. the clubs. and Team sports, clubs, cigar clubs, whatever. But you know yeah. what? It's, it's, it's such it's a perversion. Well, <laughs> no, I don't know if it's a perversion, I but I think it's... It personally. It's, it's a uh, I feel it's a it's, perversion of this really essential call to enjoy each other and to converse on many levels. You know, I'd say that... Um, uh, I just uh, there's one thing I wanted to. That's mention. just fine. I own yeah. that as my own. Yeah. No. 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 I. I. I, I think that's great. I mean, yeah. I, I. I. I would tend to agree. I don't know if I'd use the word perversion, but I think that it's a. Uh, it's a. Uh, it's slim pickings. Yeah. You know, okay. Versus what that real kind of exchange can be. Yes. Right. 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 You know, recently a, a, a very 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 good friend of mine, um, one of my best friends, had a had a, a crisis in his life, um, involving his child, and um, I went to see him. And this is a man I've known for 20 years, and good, good friend. But it was clear to me that he was not able to articulate for me how he was feeling. He didn't have the language. He really didn't. This is an accomplished man. I mm. mean, he really is. He's, a, he's an accomplished man. But he could not articulate it. He needed support. He didn't know how to ask for it. He didn't know how to share with it. Yes. And I knew that if I just sort of did it how I understand it, it would be like, you know, it would be Too much. frightening. And, and that really, um, I felt a lot of uh, pain around that, you know, that, that, that this was not a normal teaching in this world, you know, in this yeah. society. We, the men for sure don't get taught how to do that, yeah. you know, or they learn how to do men it don't so get much taught that, that, no, that, that it's the opposite, that they, they, they get all that sort of feeling access and everything else and they forget about setting boundaries and getting the job done and being responsible exactly. you, get, you get a lot of the one or the other exactly. neither of which brings happiness that's right that's so right. so so that's a big piece that's a nice of, point yeah and it, so that's another nice piece point. about new warrior you know is balance that's right to, is how part of being that? a real warrior and to, of being a real man is being in touch with your feminine self as well that's uh, they, know, they, that's like a you know, big part. Ne never give a sword to a man who doesn't know how to dance. Oh yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, really. I mean, that's it's real important. Or surrender. If you're not in touch with that side of yourself, you're dangerous. That's right. You're Got you're it. dangerous because that kind of energy is powerful. Exactly. And if it's not tempered with anything, that's when wars yeah. begin. Often, right. you know, that's exactly. when the craziness happens. And it's better happening. to use the sword as a dance, as a form, yeah. <laughs> instead of for. Lopping well, off necks. Or, yeah. or, 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 or what I would say was better to really know how to use it and what it's yeah. for. And these days, you know, my sword, such as it is, could be to set ecological boundaries. It could be to set oh, the kind of boundary that says, you know, I don't mistreat, I don't let my own um, inner demons allow me to mistreat my children. That's right. And I set a boundary for myself. Exactly. I set a boundary in the workplace where I don't abuse my staff or I don't allow that exactly. abuse to go on. Right. So there, there's a lot of ways in Love society where, where a man can manifest that energy. It's not like being a warrior, you know. I mean, no, that's, not at all. Listen, no. the bad news is only that we're out of time. Oh, okay. And uh, just tell, since this is going to be aired prior to a gathering taking place December 16th at 18 West 18th 18 Street. 18 East 18th Street. East. 18 East 18th Street. Um, it's, uh, it goes from 7 to 9.30. Uh, we call it an open circle. Okay. Uh, it's men only. 
Okay. Um, and it's basically uh, an introduction to the weekend. So people can come and learn. Absolutely. Beautiful. Absolutely. Chris, thanks a lot. Thank you. Really a pleasure, pleasure to have you. It's a pleasure. And Good to see you again. It's great stuff. Keep it up. Thanks. This is Mitchell J. Rabin for A Better World. Thanks so much for joining us. Give a call at 420-0800. Share your thoughts and feelings with me. Love hearing from you. And I look forward to seeing you all next week.